Are you ready for the word of God this morning? God has been so good. He's been so good. And uh, I want you to know that we've been praying for you. You know, none of us ever thought that uh, all of this, all of these things would be happening in the world at one time. And we've had to learn how to uh, interact with each other differently. And many people uh, personally have been affected and many people directly and indirectly have been affected by what's going on. And I mean, even us going to church, um, no one expected God to, except, except God expected this to carry on for as long as it has. And, you know, even though all of this has been going on, how many of you know that it's still a good day? He's still a good God. He's still a holy God. He's still a merciful God. Come on, give God some praise. He's still a gracious God. He's still a good God. His mercies are still new every morning. And it's still a great day to hear from God. Turn me in your Bibles to 1 Kings 17. We're going to open with the reading of the Word of God. And uh, I believe this message is really going to speak to an area that you may be in in your life right now. Um, God has just been so good, and he's just been moving mightily in the world right now. And um, if you don't recognize, if you don't have a relationship with God, you won't know it's God, and you'll mistake it for something else. But I want you to know that it is God. And um, we're going to read this story. Verse 1 says, Now Elijah the Tishabite from Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Hmm. Let me read that again. As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. So that means God can speak famine. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, you will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up. There had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the town gate, the region, when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour and a, in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. What a sad situation to be in. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. 
She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. And uh, we may not know what God has scheduled or planned for tomorrow, but I want you to know that he's still going to provide. He's still going to take care of you, even when the economy is failing, even when governments may be dysfunctional, even though you may have lost your job, even though you may be at your wit's end. God brought me up here this morning to tell you to be in peace and not to worry. He said to be in faith and not doubt because he's going to feed you in the famine. And that's my message title for today. Put it in the chat. Say it in uh, the sanctuary, fed in famine. Father God, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you are a merciful God. We thank you that you are a gracious God. God, let these words that come out of my mouth come from you, come from your spirit. Speak to your people. Change their lives. Let them know that you're with them, that you are a provider, that you are a deliverer. God, let them know that you are God in the famine and you are God in the rain. God, we know you never leave us. You never forsake us. And we thank you for your presence guiding us and being with us every step of our lives. We love you. We adore you. We praise you, God. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. You ready for the word of God this morning? All right, if you're ready, say it with me. My life is being maximized as I'm taught the Word of God. The Word of God is maximizing my life. You know, uh, I've noticed in my life and that God, He works in processes. Um, and I want to encourage you, if you haven't uh, been tuning in on Tuesdays uh, to Max Life Tuesdays, uh, Prophet and Prophet Robin have been doing a series um, called Promise, Pro Process, Prepare, Process, and Promise. There it is. It's three Ps. And so I, I've noticed that God, he works in processes. It's never just one step. It's never something easy and you're done. Uh, he's constantly moving to new areas. He's constantly making you feel uncomfortable. He's constantly building your faith. And, like, if you look at the Bible, you know, uh, Jesus, for example, right? Jesus is our example for everything. So let's use Jesus as an example. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He can do anything at any time he wants to because he's God. So, in a way... God could have sent Jesus at any time he wanted to. But instead, he chose from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, from Jacob to Judah, Judah all the way to David, and David all the way to Jesus. He chose to go through a process. And uh, the same thing goes in our lives. God will put us through processes in order to reach new levels. God will put us through processes in order to receive provision. And I'm going to show you the steps and the order of God's processes today. So if you're a note taker, I want you to take notes. I'm going to give you some steps. The first step, God's process always begins with the word. And when I say word, I mean 
a word that he could have spoken to you, a word that it could have came from prophecy, anything. Anything inspired by God. It always starts with a word. And sometimes it may not be a word that we want to hear. And it may not be a prophecy that we felt was meant for us. But it always starts with a word. Read back in Scripture, the first verse, it says, Now Elijah the Tishabite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years at my, except at my word. Backstory. Ahab is king, and he has priests and all that, and Israel is, uh, they're all being wicked right now. They're worshiping a God called Baal. And Israel and Ahab and the priests, they believe that Baal has control over nature. Baal has control over the clouds. Baal has control over rain. And all of us, we know who has the real power, the true power, the creator of the heavens and the earth, God. But... Baal, I mean, but Ahab is serving Baal, and and God sees that. And God commands Elijah to declare a famine on the land. Hmm. And not only does the famine affect Ahab, the priests in Israel, it also affects Elijah, the person who spoke it. And sometimes God will speak a famine in order for us to get our focus back on him. And whether or not we agree or believe in the word that God spoke, that rests upon us. You can choose to run. You can choose to hide But when God wills something, it's going to happen. And you can look at the story of Jonah as an example of what I'm talking about when you're running from uh, what God wills, what God is saying. Uh, Not only Jonah, he's a prophet. So you have Elijah as a prophet and you have Jonah as a prophet. Elijah actually did what God said. Jonah tried to run. And Jonah's running, and he's trying to go far away from Nineveh, and God sends a storm on the boat where Jonah is. And not only does God send a storm on the boat where Jonah is, God sends that storm, and on the rest of the ship crew, they understand that it's a God that's doing this. So they figure out it's Jonah, and once they figure out it's Jonah, they throw him off the boat. And the story says after they've thrown him off the boat that they even turned to God and they started worshiping God. But Jonah gets thrown into the water after the storm and the storm immediately calms. And then the next thing that happens is Jonah gets swallowed up in the belly of a whale. And he doesn't come out until he's willing to accept God's command. So I encourage you today, don't run from the word that God has spoken to you. Embrace it even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. Read back with me to verse 2. And it says, The word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Now, here is Elijah. He did what God said. He spoke the famine on the land. 
and now he's chilling next to the brook, and God is providing for him. And the raven is bringing him food, and he's got water, and uh, I mean, you could say he's pretty comfortable right now, right? But then one day, something happens. One day, the water runs out. One day, the ravens stop coming. What? Elijah followed God's word. He delivered the message. Why did it stop? Has God forsaken him? And maybe that's you. God, I've been serving. God, I've been obedient. God, God, I've been reading my Bible. God, God, I've been tithing. And, And God says, I know. And that's all well and good. But now it's time to move. You've gotten too comfortable. Step two of God's process. God will make you uncomfortable. Have you ever been too comfortable before? I know when I'm at home, sometimes my mom, if I'm laying on the couch downstairs, I don't usually come out of my room. But sometimes on the rare occasion that I do, I'll lay on the couch and uh, my mom will come in and she'll see me laid up on the couch. She's like, you comfortable? Uh, And have you ever been comfortable before See, when, when you get too comfortable, you lose your imagination. When you get too comfortable, you start to take things for granted. When you get too comfortable, you don't move. And here's an interesting story. The children of Israel, right? God delivered the children of Israel out of so much. God delivered them out of the hand of Pharaoh. He delivered them through the 12 plagues. He helped them across the uh, Red Sea. And through all of that, Exodus tells us that they still complained. They said, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. And isn't it sad? God has delivered the children of Israel, the children of Israel out of Egypt, and He's getting ready to bring them to a promised land. And they're complaining because they're uncomfortable. You know, what's the opposite of complaining? Thankfulness. Sometimes we just have to be thankful. I said, sometimes we just have to be thankful. We just have to be thankful. If God woke you up this morning, you should be thankful. If you have clothes on your back, you should be thankful. If you have food to eat, you should be thankful. Because he's a supplier. Even in famine, even when the economy is failing, even when I'm afraid, even when the world seems to be falling apart, God, you're my provider. You're my keeper. You're my deliverer. It says, I've looked, I put my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heavens and the earth. And even when it's difficult, Lord... I'm still thankful because I know you're making a way. I know you're opening doors. I know you're making the crooked way straight. God, I am thankful. And more than anything, I know you're working all things for my good. One thing God has been talking to me about recently is, uh, and It's about purpose and my purpose and things like that. And one of the things I discovered about God is 
He, he's, he created us, and after we sinned, after man sinned, now we're back on a path to get back to God's original intent for us. And when I say that, I mean, in order for us to get back to God's original intent for our lives, we have to get uncomfortable. You know, Jesus died for our sins. So when Jesus died for us, when we make that relationship with Jesus, if anybody here has, uh, when you found Jesus, you can't say you're the same from when you first found Jesus. He's changed things. He's changed you. And that process of change is us getting back to the original intent he had for us. The Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans of good and not of evil. And those good plans, those plans that God has, ha- has for you, we have to work back to those plans. We have to make our way towards those plans. And we won't do that if we're too comfortable in the area that we're in. And so in order for you to move to, in order for God to move you to the next level, in order for God to take you to new heights, he's got to shake up your world. He's got to dry up your brook. He's got to make you uncomfortable. You know, in, in my life, God has had to shake up some things to keep me moving towards my purpose. And uh, what did I say was the first step? It always starts with a word. God starts everything with a word. And if you're not familiar with my personal story, hi, I'm Keeman Dumas. Um, I was called to preach at the age of three years old. And at the age of three years old, even though I'm young, very young, I have a choice to make. Am I going to accept the call or am I going to run from it? And maybe you see me up here today and you're like, oh, he did it. He, he, he accepted the call on it's, it's, it's that easy. And, well, I want you to let you know, even though it was for a short period of my life, for a period of my life, I didn't know if this is what I wanted to do anymore. And I was comfortable. I was comfortable in my friend group. I was comfortable staying at home. Am I preaching to somebody? I I was comfortable eating unhealthy. I was comfortable. And as comfortable as I was, I wasn't moving any closer to my purpose. And God had to shake some things up. He had to take me out of my place of comfort and throw me into the fire so that I could be forged into who he called me to be. And don't be too comfortable in your environment. Don't be too comfortable in your culture. Let God shake some things up. Move towards his original intent for your life. Move towards his purpose. And another thing I found out about God is he doesn't operate according to what I feel like. He operates according to his will. And what do I mean by that? He's not looking for someone to tell him what to do and how to do it and when to do it. He's looking for some obedience. The Bible says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So he's looking for some obedience He's looking for someone who will receive instructions and follow them. And when we do that, we discover his will. And see, when you find God's will, you find purpose. Uh, Everybody knows Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. See, when you understand this, when you get a revelation of who God is, when you get a revelation of what God's will is, you aren't worried about famine. 
Because you know he's working all things for my good. And God says, when you find my will, you find my purpose. And everything concerning my, your life, when you find my purpose, I'm working around for your good. God says, I'm working it for your good. I'm Every situation that you're dealing with in life, I'm working for your good. All crisis, any storm, any famine that comes, I'm working for your good. And see, you can't stop the will of God. You can't delay the will of God. You can't rush the will of God. You can yoke up with the will of God. You can be in agreement with it. You can stand in faith knowing I, this is what I believe. I believe his word. I believe his promise. I believe his plans for my life. I'm going to yoke up with it. I'm going to be in agreement with it. I'm going to walk with what he has planned and what he has purposed. Because I know he's working things out for my good. I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to worry about the famine because I'm yoked up with God. I'm standing on his promise. He's got me in the palm of his hand. He's working things out for my good. Let's take a few moments to thank God for feeding us in the famine. Thank God that he is working things out for our good. Thank God that he is faithful. Thank God that he has sees me. Thank God. And you have to believe it. You have to believe it. Reading back at 1 Kings... 17, verse 8. It says, The word of the Lord come to him. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath when he come to a town gate. And the widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread and only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. You know, in, in a way, I've been thankful to God for this year, really thankful to God for this year. Uh, he's really used it as an opportunity to uh, grow my faith and to develop me. And recently I've really had to lean in on uh, his and, and trust his plan for my life. And uh, the other day I was uh, here at the church and usually I come up, when I come up here, I'm uh, here all day long. And that particular day I didn't bring any food with me to church and uh, <laughs> and as the day was going on I was getting really hungry and uh, at the time I really didn't have the money like that to go and spend it go to go get something to eat but uh, when my stomach my stomach was talking Lord and uh, <laughs> and me and my cousin, we have a place that we normally go to when uh, we're around this area. There's like a taco truck that we go to. Um, and so I was about to go to the taco truck, and as I was in the car and in the parking lot getting ready to pull off, God told me to go to Chipotle. And, well, God, uh, Chipotle is more expensive than the taco truck. <laughs> Uh, God I thought you knew everything. Come on. And so as I'm getting ready to pull off, God's like, go, go to Chipotle. And although I was unsure and whatever, I, I, I decided to follow God and I went to Chipotle. And so I walk into Chipotle 
and I get in line, and then I run into my Aunt Teresa, who just happened to be there at the same time that I was there. And I greeted her, of course, and said hello, and gave her a hug, and um, it's okay. We, I work with her all the time, so it, it, social distancing, I know, but I gave her a hug anyways. Anyways, <laughs> I got in line and went about my business, and uh, ordered my stuff and was going down the line. And when I get to the end of the line, I find out that she took care of my food. And it's so funny. Just when I was at my last little, God provided. And notice this. I had a choice to make. Either I move in faith on the word that God gave me, or I follow my own voice. And here comes the third pointer of what I'm telling you today about the processes of God. God will test your faith. Sometimes God will test your faith to see if you believe in his word. You know, it's not enough to just say that you believe The Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. That's two instructions. You have to be willing and you have to be obedient. And see, that's faith. Faith is when I'm willing and obedient. I want you to write that down. Faith is being willing and obedient. Willing. That means I believe. Obedient, that means I'm acting. Faith without works is dead. And when I told you, it it may seem like something small, but that's what God's looking for. He's looking for your little. The the word of God, it says, if you're faithful in the little, I'll make you, uh, you'll be faithful in the much. And... If you follow the little things I spoke, then I'll bless you with the mega things. Don't underestimate your little. You know, even in our lives, we look at a little. And and if you go back to the scripture, it says, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. So obviously he recognized that she had a sense of fear. She was afraid because, well, that's my last little. And sometimes that last little that we try and hold on to is that little piece that God's going to use to bless us and continually bless us. And a lot of the times we look at that last little and we're scared to give and we're scared to uh, uh, put our trust in God and our finances and things like that. When God's saying, if you just give me your last little, I can make you ruler of much. I can bless you beyond belief. Give God your last little. And now, verse 14, I'm getting ready to close. Verse 14, it says, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The flower will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. She was obedient. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the women and her family. For the flour, the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. The last step. To this process, God will provide. And we've reached that last step, provision. 
And God is saying, if you just follow my steps, if you're willing to get uncomfortable, if you're willing to listen to my word, if you're willing to have your faith stretched, I will provide. I will provide. And after all of that, because Elijah followed the word of the Lord and was willing to get uncomfortable, God in turn was also able to bless somebody else through his obedience. Whose blessing are you blocking? Whose salvation are you blocking because you are being disobedient to the word that God spoke to you? God is telling you to move. God's telling you to get uncomfortable, and you're just fine sitting where you are. And all the while, God is trying to bless somebody else through you. Don't be selfish. Use your faith and allow God to stretch you. Allow God to move you. Allow God to take you to new places so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. You know, when I first started uh, ministering, uh, the first time I ministered on a, I ministered on a Tuesday service, and uh, Prophet had texted me the day of, <laughs> and she asked me if I wanted to minister. And uh, no slight to her because she knew I had a message, and there was a message that I had prepared for something else. And uh, she asked me if I was, wanted to minister, and I remember looking at that text message and putting my phone down. <laughs> I looked at that text message, I said, oh, no, man. <laughs> I put that phone down. And God spoke to me through my brother, um, Saul, Pastor E. Saul, and he told me, when God gives you that opportunity, you need to take it. And uh, that was just an opportunity of God to stretch me. That was an opportunity of God to grow me. Imagine if I didn't walk in the purpose and walk in the calling that God has for my life. You know, my biggest purpose, my biggest thing in life is for people to get saved. I want to see my friends saved. I want to see people I don't know saved. And if I didn't decide to take that call, answer that text message, Say, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. If I didn't respond to the word, I could have blocked somebody else's blessing. I could have blocked somebody else from getting to Christ. Don't ignore the word that God spoke to you. And... If you follow God's process, God says your, oil, your flour will never be used up and your oil will never run dry. I speak that over you today. Your flour will never be used up and your oil will never run dry. Brother Brudra, I speak that to you. Your flour, it will never be used up and your oil will never run dry. Teacher Natasha, I speak that over you. Your flour will never be used up. Your oil will never run dry. Daniel, I speak that over you today. Your flour will never be used up. And your oil will never run dry. Oh, Father, shake it. How about so cold? Shake it. Christy, your flour will never be used up and your oil will never run dry. Prophet, your flour will never dry up, run up, run out, and your oil will never run dry. Christopher, your flour will never run out and your oil will never run dry. Pastor Isao, your your flour will never be used up. 
and your oil will never run dry. Mom, your flour will never be used up. And your oil will never run dry. I speak that to everybody online. All those who have maybe been on their last, their last little, your flour will never be used up. Your oil will never run dry. That's the word of the Lord. Accept that word. Accept the word of the Lord today. Accept it. Accept it. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a God of provision. You are a provider. You love us, God. You sent your son for us, God. You poured your blood out for us, God. You sacrificed yourself for us, God. God, we're willing to get uncomfortable. God, we're willing to move out of our comfort zone. God, we're willing to have our faith stretched and follow your word. God, I thank you for your spirit being within us. Your infinite spirit being within us, God. You show us things to come. You protect us. You are a God, and you are a God in the famine. You are a God in the rain. We thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to pray for anybody who hasn't accepted Christ in their life. This is a great opportunity to do it. If you're worried about the things going on in this world, you don't have to worry. You know, there's the story of Jesus and the disciples. They were in the boat. And the storm was raging with the disciples in the boat with Jesus. And the disciples did something strange. They panicked. They ran to God in fear. But God opened my eyes to show me, why are you fearful when you have peace in your boat? Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. They believed he was the son of God. And when you recognize that you have Jesus in the boat with you, when you recognize that you have peace in the boat with you, when you recognize you have joy in the boat with you, when you recognize you have grace in the boat with you, you don't let your storm control your situation. You don't let your storm control your joy. Say this with me, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for coming down to save me. I repent of my sins. I change my life towards you. Jesus, you are the only way. Jesus, you are peace. Jesus, you feed me in famine. I thank you for it, and I change my life towards you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer of salvation with me, we want you to know that we are so excited for the decision that you just made, the decision for Jesus Christ that you just made. Please remember to comment down below so that we can connect with you as you embark on this awesome journey. 
Before we go, we want you to know that one, we are praying for you and that God is with you. Two, subscribe to the channel and hit those no that notification bell so that you know the next time that we upload. And three, share this message with a friend so it can impact and maximize their lives. We'll see you next time.